Coming up on Body Work. I want to see you hit them hard. There you go! Wish I never did it. You're at the doctor's office. This and this and this and that six thousand dollars. Got our work cut out for us today. It is supposed to be like kosher. I don't know what it is. Yeah, drug or something. Oh. I've had to lug these around for so long. Ooh. We call Botox the crack of plastic surgery. Me too, man. Me too. I can change. My mom is coming in to see what other wonderful things we can do for her. Oh man, are you going to dance flamenco today? What are you here for? What do you need? You look fine. I don't know. My son decided that I should do something. I don't know. I'm gonna pinch her a little bit today. It's gonna be painful. No. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Keep on dancing. Hey, mom. Hi, Bobby. What are you gonna do today? I don't know. I just hope it doesn't hurt. It's going to hurt a little bit. People have to suffer if they want to look beautiful, right? No, they're not. So we don't make them suffer. We just, no? make, them, we just make them remember. Okay. Okay. okay, so we can get rid of these little things here. Okay. Yeah. But when are you cutting me this? This. I don't know. We're going to cut. I don't know, Mom. you got you to figure out when you want it done. I want it done any time. I don't care. Yeah, any time. Any time until you want it done. My mother now is telling me that she wants to have surgery on her neck. She just has a little bit here, so she's been after me a little bit about having it done. I just want it, like, God, it's not so, good. and that's it. it and that's not a big deal, no? Do I have to fall asleep on that? <laughs> no, because you, you actually, the answer is yes, exactly. Because I, I couldn't stand listening the whole time. <laughs> tell me. You, you know what? I'll actually give you a mirror. I so you can tell me how to do it. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> My mother talks about surgery every once in a while, and it goes in spurts. She'll say, I want to want to wait done, and then she goes, I'll never have surgery. Do it all you can, because then so I don't have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> How often can you do this? You can do this till... My whole life until yeah. I die? She's a character. Who knows if and when she'll ever have it done. All you do is just put this on, and then afterwards you just then forget about it. Just walk like this. Walk like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you have some disease. They're used to all the people walking like that out of our office yeah. anyway. The pain is so agonizing, it's unbearable. I want to rip my back out. Oh, I hate my breasts. I want to reduce them. On top of being big, they're very heavy. I get a lot of back aches because of them, so I definitely need a breast reduction. I don't feel good about myself, and so I want to do something about that. A reduction and lipo. Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good to see you. You all ready? Yep. Worried? <laughs> Nervous? Yeah. I'm a little anxious right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's good, actually. that's I, I prefer that to people who think that they're just getting their, their hair done, you know? Oh, okay, good. We'll take a peek at you. Right now, you're what size? I'm a size double D. Okay. Did you think about what size you want to be? I did want to go down to a B. Okay. All right, well, we'll that'll be a, a, a good reduction yeah. there. Breast reductions are more than just a cosmetic operation. It's a functional operation. Usually by like 9 o'clock, I have to be sitting against something or laying down already because the back aches are really bad. Well, you're kind of the classic, you know, breast reduction patients. Reducing their breasts usually makes their symptoms get much better, if not go away completely. This was my last resort. I have tried all kinds of things, exercise and everything, and they just don't reduce. I decided I have to do something more than what I've been doing. I've had to lug these around for so long, and the pain is so incredible that I just can't wait. It's going to be a life-changing experience. I'm Mendoza. I'm 26 years old. I've been married for eight years. I have three kids. Yeah. 
I've wanted to get my nose fixed since junior high, since I was probably 13 years old. I used to do pageants when I was very young. It was a little bit big, but not as big as it is now. When I take pictures, it shows a lot more than when I'm in person with someone. So I think it is holding me back. So babe, are you ready to take care of me? i always ready. <laughs> Only two days. No, they said a month. <laughs> a month? No. I can't do anything for a month. I feel kind of selfish because it's an elective surgery. I'm young, I have three kids, and I have a very stable family. Sometimes I think about what about if something happens to me, but I just want to have a little nose. I want to look at myself and see myself more attractive. Hey, how you doing? Hi. How are you? How are you? Nice seeing you. Okay. You know, it's, it's always nice to do surgery on somebody who is already very attractive and just make that one little difference. Thank you. What I see is that you're way too wide here, okay? And actually, your nose is slightly crooked. Uh, and on the side, we're going to take the bump down, okay? And that'll just bring the tip slightly up. Okay. And your nostrils are slightly too wide. Even if we just do a little bit like this, it'll bring it in. Uh -uh. Well, no, I'm not going to make it look... No, no, you won't look like you had it done. Oh, my God. You're going to have a very nice look. In Kathy's case, she's worried that here I am, I'm good looking, I don't have a problem, but I want that little bit of perfection, and for going after that little bit, I'm going to end up worse. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the little bump here. That looks good, huh? Yeah. That would be good, huh? Yeah, yeah. I tell people there's a chance it won't be 100% straight, but most people are significantly straighter. I am going to be scared of how I'm going to come out. You know, what about if I don't like it? It's going to be just a change for me. I see my nose every single day in the mirror. You know, I don't know how it's going to be with having a new nose. It's going to be a chance I'm going to have to take. I brought you this. Don't get upset. Marilyn gave it to me. My mother often gives us things that she thinks we love and want. Is this supposed to be like kosher? So sure, I don't know, you know what it is. I'm sure the girls will love it. Huh? Well, you'll taste it and see if it's any good. It doesn't look very appetizing, Mom. No, but why? I mean... Many years ago, I was opening one of our cabinets at home, and there was a sauce there. It was a pick of pepper sauce. Yeah. It looks like someone, something died in here. Really? Oh, boy. And I saw like 10 of them. I said, where, where, why'd you get this stuff? And Meredith said to me, she goes, your mother says you love it. I said, I've never had it before. I'll get that later, Mom. I got I got a bunch of people so coming in. Today? Yeah. Were you operating now? Yeah. Sorry, great. Oh, okay. Ciao. Um, we're gonna put some numbing cream on, and it should take about 30 to 45 minutes in total to do everything. All right. Lurk Conkey is a young lady who had silicone injected or biopolymer injected in her lips and had had a less than desirable effect. How are you? Good. It's been a while, huh? Yeah, a year. Did you take anything? A yeah. Valium. Okay, that's not working. Okay. <laughs> Let's take a look. Laura got injected by a non-physician practitioner. It's illegal because it wasn't done by a physician and it wasn't done in anybody's office and we don't really know if it was silicone or biopolymer. Your, your husband's driving, right? Maybe I'll start an IV, okay. and I'll give you a little something just to calm you down. Great. Okay? I'm so desperate for lips, and I had to have it, and I found somebody illegal to do it, and what could happen, you know? The dark side of plastic surgery is that you have physicians, as well as non-physicians, catering to this lure for perfection. You have potential patients willing to take a risk and a chance. They want it cheap. They want it permanent and they want it perfect. And often that combination should have a big sign that says, look out, buyer beware, this isn't how it's supposed to be. In the end, you're gonna pay dearly because it's gonna destroy your face, your body, your life. When I see this kind of stuff with a patient like Laura, it pisses me off. All right, I'll get your IV started in just a moment. The problem with silicone is when it's injected, your body then says, you know what, we need to get rid of this. So it starts creating a defense around that silicone and, it, and the lips get bigger and bigger and the face gets bigger and bigger. Boy, I'm numb. 
It started bothering her more and more, and she decided, you know, I need to do something about this. Once I mark you, I don't want you, I want you not licking it off. Uh, Laura saw me a couple years ago for yeah. removal of the silicone. You don't want a big lower lip? No. I know. That's why we're doing it. We initially tried to inject it with steroids. It didn't work. And then I removed some of the silicone or the biopolymer. It made it much better. We want to make this more equal to that. That's still too big for me. So today I'm, I'm going to have the lower lip cut more and the top lip so that hopefully this will be it. Okay. Okay. They can start the IV. Okay. I'll never get it all out. Any time, 10 years from now, I can have a reaction to it. It could break off and migrate in my cheeks. It's, it's horrible. All right, I'm gonna walk into the operating room. I was tired of this. And, um, right. Wish I never did it. is having lip surgery because of a botch procedure she had a few years ago. Okay, you're gonna feel a little sting, okay? Where am I? You're at the doctor's you're, you're, office. Ah, you're in my, okay. you're in my okay. office. Okay. You're, you're doing, doing great. Doing? This is Dr. Wolf. Remember, we're Dr. Wolf here? That's it. I think what we'll do, Breeze, is we'll do the top lip first. You feel a little pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Not pain. Today, we're gonna literally take out part of her lip on the upper and the lower lip. What I'm doing is I'm removing a lot of the extra tissue that has developed around the silicone. This is almost like a piece of plastic. That's part of the silicone boutique. You have muscle around the mouth, and if you get too aggressive with this process, you can actually damage the muscle, and you can make her become a functional problem, not just a cosmetic problem. Okay, so now we finish your right side. It's very frustrating for Laura to go through this. Knowing what she had before and what she has now, it's, it's a horrible feeling. I'm trying to get them as even as possible, but sometimes because there's so much variability in the material, you may have a little asymmetry. You already have so much asymmetry, it'll certainly be much better than what you have. You want to see what you look like? Smile. See, you got everything showing now. Okay. Thank you so much. Great, you did super. You want a painkiller? Well, I have the, if you could just get me a couple of water. Of course, no problem. Holy Jesus. Wow. Yeah, pretty extensive, eh? It's more than I thought. Really? It took a lot out of it. I didn't think it was going to be that bad. That's what she wanted. I literally took out half her lip on the top and probably a quarter or maybe a half on the bottom. This is what you, happens if you mess around the wrong people. I'm telling you, I'm shoot the lady that did this. Destroying everybody else's lives, it's not fair. You finished for the day? Yeah, I gotta run out of here and get to my brother's house. What's up doing there? We're gonna have a dinner oh, with the whole, nice. the whole gang. Oh, the usual nice. Monday night deal. You know, speaking about your brother, remember last year with the axe with the neck? Yeah. We went through a lot that year. Mom's a server. Every Monday we have dinner with my brother. It's a nice way to see each other. Mom, she doesn't have meatballs, she has tuna. My brother Isaac is a neurosurgeon. Two years ago, he with his partner operated on me and took out the disc that was pinching on my nerve. Complaining about numbness in my neck and I can't operate. Isaac, I want to die. The pain in my neck was preventing me from enjoying my life. I could barely sleep. I couldn't exercise. I had some neck injections, which were no fun, of no resolution. I decided that it's either I get operated or I jump. Carlos is Isaac. On the other side of the knife, and this was the very first time he'd been a patient. And, um, and boy, was he a lousy patient. The first 60 calls. Am I going to be like this? 
Now I understand why you don't operate on your brother. That's yeah. called pure empathy. Oh, very empathetic. empathetic. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. I was empathetic. Right after the surgery, I made sure that you were okay. You know, this was actually one of the times that my brother got to do what he's always wanted to do, which was slip my neck, you know? <laughs> Papito, I wish I had been here because you know I wouldn't be exactly there every day. Papito's got to go. <laughs> What's the matter with you? There's never a dull moment. There's always some very spirited conversation. So I just want to go like this and then cut it from here, and that's it. Do you really think I need it? Say no. <laughs> no, I went to see him do one nose in my life. And I asked him, I said, so you do this and this and this, and that's $6,000. Cash. Though I think that we both kid each other a lot. The fact that my brother practices plastic surgery and I practice brain surgery is a reflection of our different personalities. It's amazing. It's not guys, it's not always cash. What do you mean? It's not oh, check. <laughs> My brother is a hot headed, hot tempered person, but there's no one else that I would ever entrust my life to. My brother Isaac gave me back what I love about my life. You take charge? Of course. Yeah. That's great. I run into the right profession. You know, when I think someone's got to do it, I got to tell you. Those poor plastic surgeons. <laughs> I don't like looking like Dolly Parton anymore. I want to be able to go outdoors and ride bikes and climb a tree if I want to and, and not feel uncomfortable or always watching to make sure they're still in their place. It's the day of my surgery and I'm a little nervous right now. I just sort of want to go in and have them relax me so I can calm down. Good morning, Georgina. Good morning, yes. How are you doing? Good. I'm going to take you in now and start getting ready for Dr. Kelly. All right. I don't enjoy breast reductions as much as other surgeries because you're wading in a lot of tissue. Hi. Hi. You all ready? Ready as I can be. <laughs> good, good. It's technically unwieldy and it's not clean and precise. Now you're thinking V cup range? Mm -hmm. Georgina's reduction is pretty dramatic. Just the sheer amount of breast tissue that had to be removed meant that there was going to be a lot of work involved. Surgery is going to take me about probably three hours. You have a lot of breast tissue. All right. All right. See you soon. We'll take Thank good care you. of you. Sure. Thank you. Nice deep breath. You're going to go off to sleep now. Hey, Eddie. Hey, Mike. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. We got our work cut out for us today. It was big. <laughs> Breast reduction, you're basically carving through breast tissue, trying to imagine the shape that you want to get. We like to call this breast unscripted. And breast tissue tends to bleed a lot. So I think it's physically demanding. It's just a lot of hard work. I need the weight. How much you want? It was more difficult to make Georgina symmetrical because she was so asymmetric to begin with. So what's our totals right now? Nine right and nine thirty-six left. When I'm taking breast tissue from the larger side, we'll have to remove a little bit more so they're the same on both sides. That's taking right. two hundred more on the left side, and I think we're still a little bigger on this side, but we're reaching the limits of how close we can get things. Once you've gotten that volume removed, we reapproximate the skin using staples. And we do the same thing on the opposite breast, and then we sit the patient up and make sure that the two breasts appear symmetric. It was amazing. She's still a little bigger on this side. So. Georgina's breasts are uneven. I think we're still a little bigger on this side. We had to go back and remove a little additional breast tissue to make things symmetric. Oh, that's good. 
What a change, huh? Hi, how are you guys? Hi, fine. How are you doing? Everybody's all right? Yeah. Good. She did great. We really had uh, no problems with anything. That's good news. It was a tough case. We removed about four pounds worth of breast tissue. So that's a wow. big, big weight, a literal weight off her shoulder. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. Elizabeth Cross is a patient who's coming in today to get a little Botox. Would have nobody else touch my body. Well, thank you. Ooh. <laughs> thank you. We call Botox the crack of plastic surgery. Do I have the best job in the world? Do I have, have the best the job in the world? You have the most amazing job in the world. I have, I have the best job in the world. You really do. Once you've had it and it starts to wear off, you rush back to the plastic surgeon's office. That it is impossible. To give her Botox, we basically have to strap her to the table oh, here. Oh, gosh. It looks like a, uh, a science fiction movie. <laughs> Janet, you don't have to have Botox. For me, it's beauty above pain, so. Tell me when I have to squint and look Okay, bad. look angry, look angry. Okay, relax. People will suffer to get something that they want. No pain, no gain is really the same for plastic surgery as it is for everything else in life. So Janet, this is the part where you'd have to be strapped down. Everyone has a different threshold for pain. I handle pain well, and Dr. Herman is very gentle as he injects me. That's it. Okay. Now I'm good for a few months. Good for a good three to six months. I don't want anyone to know I'm doing this. Uh, this is a secret beauty. Uh-huh. Well, now the secret may be out. Thank you again. No, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now we'll be in touch. Yeah, about three months. Okay, back. yeah. I don't okay. want anyone to know I have any wrinkles. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. Laura's coming in today. She's about a week out from her surgery where we removed the upper part of her lip and the lower part of her lip. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Have you tried them out yet? <laughs> it's okay. Okay, no, no, don't bite it now. Okay, open up. Okay, I'm just gonna cut these things that are irritating you a little bit, okay? Laura looks pretty scary. Now, they look horrible now. This is how they looked last time, didn't they? Mm -hmm. She has these stitches that are dissolvable. She's going to also have scabs because when you have this kind of stitch, it tends to form like that. I think you're going to be pretty symmetric. There's just going to be a little bit of asymmetry right now, but as it heals, it'll heal. It is pretty scary. In fact, the first couple of times I did it, I would look at the patient and say, oh, my God, what did I do? Okay? okay. Great. Bye-bye. Take care. You're going to be fine, don't worry. Hopefully this will be the last of this, you know, and if we do, it'll be maybe a little minor. Okay? Great. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs> Kathy Mendoza is coming in today for surgery. She's brought her whole family. Hello. Ready? Let's go. Let's take your blood pressure. Listen to your heart. I'm feeling very anxious. I want to get my nose something that I really, really want. But at the same time, I'm nervous. <laughs> Been drinking a drug or something. Oh, I'm nervous. Hello. Hi. You look a little nervous, huh? Yes, I am. How are you? Good. You're, what are you nervous about? I'm nervous about the anesthesia. OK, well, anesthesia. let me tell you, the, the person who's doing anesthesia would be doing it for me or my family. Yeah. Best. Of course, they're going to be more anxious because they're saying, well, God forbid, if something happens and my kids, we certainly worry more about, are you going to come back? Essentially, all I do is mark the point where I want the bump to really be removed from. But it's essentially just a guide. Most of it is by my fingers and what it feels like and what it looks like. What I'm like really worried about is what I told you, that my nose looks up like that. Like, I don't even want it, like, slightly up. Well, well, look at this. Here, take a look so you, because you say you don't want it up. That nose That's is up, normal. right? Mm -hmm. Kathy is right now very anxious. Uh, I think she's nervous about the anesthesia. I think she's nervous about her outcome. We're going to do you under general so that you don't have to worry, okay? Okay, okay we'll Thank take good done. care. You don't worry. Thank you okay. so much. I recognize that. I try to let them understand that I, I really do understand what they're going through. Deep breath. <laughs> Right, this is it, the last round. 
<laughs> when I enter the operating room, I'm going to be thinking about my kids and my family. You ready? It's kind of cool, but we'll cover you up next, okay? I don't want to, like, die or anything. I have three kids, and if something happens to me, what are they going to do without me? Kathy's nervous about the anesthesia, nervous about her outcome. Take a nice dream, we'll take good care of you, you'll be fine. Deep breaths. Okay, guys, ready to roll? Great. The challenging thing about Kathy's nose is that she's really attractive and you just want to keep her that way. Any nose surgery at any one time can potentially come out terrible if you take a little too much or rasp a little too much. Do a little rasping. Even though when I'm doing nose surgery, I kind of just do it, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, is this the one? This takes down some of the bone and cartilage. So we're going to do the osteomies right now. When you break the nose, there's a lot of things that go into it. Tap, tap. There's certain tones that I hear. Ooh, they're perfect. That was aho death. That I know I went through the right place. Okay, so now we're gonna crank it. I do it in a very specific location so that I break it just right so I get less tissue damage. Ooh, oh, there's nothing like that sound, boy. Let me see your picture again. Look, that's what you wanted. I think we're right there. I think that's it. Okay, let's close it up. Kathy, you did wonderful. How are you feeling? Good, huh? You were worried about waking up. You're fully awake. Okay, babe? Yep, that's me here. See that? Okay, you did super. My pleasure. And your nose looked exactly like that picture. Oh, I'm doing well. It is. Okay. <laughs> you did great. I gotta do those. Oh my god, I can't forget it. Okay. Is your first game tomorrow? It is. We play um, North Miami Beach. Cool. There you go! I coach the 80 pound key rat tackle football team. So, you have any advice for me, Missy? Just go out there and. Um... Pounds, that's it. My son has been playing football for four years. Michael's excited. I hope he doesn't break someone in half. <laughs> there you go, Michael. Good job. <laughs> but you'll be proud anyway. I'll be proud. <laughs> Guys, don't jump on the scale, all right? Get on it gently. I enjoy coaching football. It's a big responsibility. It's hard to balance that with work. I want to see you hit them hard so that they know Kiva Skane is here, okay? In the office, everybody's afraid of Dr. Kelly. Michael! Michael, play wider! Go to the spot! Mike is really like the big cheese. He's the big boss. There you go! Way to block! Way to block! Way to play! Yeah, that's all right! Good job! With that take-no-prisoners attitude, he runs the office like he runs his son's football team. Guys, listen up. When it comes to alignment, just follow the ball, just like Joshua did, okay? Ready? Great, let's go. Let's get it back. I'm a very competitive guy. I like to win. Let's hold him! I'm trying to teach them lessons about life, but I want to win the game. Ah! Well, it's the fourth quarter. We're losing 12 to nothing. We've never made that many mistakes. No, never. never. It's really killed us. Play a great game, guys. Let's go up and be good sportsmen, all right? It's important to take off time to coach football because I think it's important for my son. I love doing surgery, and I love doing football. So I got the best of all worlds. I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world. You crush the guy? Yeah. That's good. Thank 
Kathy Mendoza is coming in today. She is three days post-op. Today she'll get to see her nose, which is really kind of nice. I'm scared to see my nose, to see what it's going to look like. And I'm scared that it's going to hurt. <laughs> I'm gonna take all this stuff off. I don't know how it's gonna feel. Hello. Hey, how are you? Hi. How'd you do? Good, good. How are you? Good. Great. Very good. You look uh, pretty good. Considering it's only three days, huh? <laughs> Great. I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff. This is kind of gross. If this hurts, tell me. This, most of the time it's the anticipation of what's yeah. not, it doesn't tell me that you're a little gross there. Not too bad, though. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you wanna see what it looks like today? Is it gonna look ugly? No, not at all. The packing is probably the best, most uncomfortable part. So just relax, close your eyes. That's all. Oh, 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 oh. That's it. Did that hurt? Oh, uh, no. It just oh, felt so weird. weird. Well, that's it. Oh, just, my yeah, God. Yeah, it, didn't hurt. it doesn't hurt. It's just weird, isn't it? Oh, my God. It felt so weird. Yeah, if you're having pain, tell me, okay? If you're just nervous. Yeah, I'm just okay. nervous. Swollen. Well, you're very swollen. That's three days. You feeling okay? Ah, oh, so it's right, Rosie. Yeah. Here, breathe in here. Breathe in here. Open your eyes and breathe in. Let me put the chair down just a little bit. Sometimes this happens. Open your eyes. Breathe through your mouth. Okay, you're good. Just deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Like. Sometimes this happens. You feel like you're in fat Huh? Breathe your mouth. You doing okay? Okay. After she saw her nose, Kathy looked like she passed out. Sometimes patients who see themselves for the first time sort of faint. You know, it's such an emotional thing that sometimes you don't really realize it until you're looking in the mirror. Oh, it feels good. Okay. Yeah. I freaked out because my nose just looked so swollen. It just didn't look like me. The first couple of times this happened with my patients, I turned white because I don't know what to do. <laughs> okay. I need to be patient and maybe it's the swelling and it'll go down. It'll take you a couple of weeks to get used to it. Yeah. You know. Okay? Thank you so Good. Much. Bye bye. You just take it easy over the weekend now. I will. Don't do it yeah. too much, okay? Really I'll be calm. Okay. Right. See you Tuesday. Can you do me a favor? Can you take care of the last few patients that are coming in this afternoon? I have to get to a really important meeting right now. No problem. Okay? Sure. Great, thanks. Two o'clock on a Wednesday, huh? I'm telling you, it's an important meeting I gotta get to. No problem. All right? Thanks. Great. Great. Everybody in the office knows that I do this. I think they think it's kind of funny. I don't think they perceive me as the kind of person who comes out and gets filthy, dirty, and is out here with an animal. This is really the exact opposite of being in the office. This is not about being in control. I'm at Katie Klimas' house, a friend of mine who teaches me. She helps me along. Oh, baby. You're depressing me. More on the beginner level, I guess you'd say. Not graceful. If I was competing, I'd be in with probably the elementary school kids. Good boy. I jump about four nine feet. Where's my stunt double? And he jumps about two feet, so <laughs> definitely a big difference in size. That jump was great. He's on the money. Nick is a thoroughbred from Kentucky. Um, unfortunately, Nick just uh, didn't make the grade at the track, so I got him as a cast off. Nick! What do you think, Nick? Oh. Think you could do that? It's like, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I think that most people would perceive me as somebody who has to compete at a very high level. But really, that's not why I'm out here. Why I'm out here is really to get away from the stress and strain of being a plastic surgeon. Good boy. Yeah, should we just want to hit plate 
Yesterday after I went home after surgery, everything was fine. And then when I went to change into, you know, what I was going to wear to sleep with, there was some bleeding. And so that made me really nervous. Hi. Hi, Doctor. How are you? Doctor, how are you? Good. You had a little scare this morning? Oh, yes. Georgina had some leakage from her breasts in the first few days. That's pretty normal, you know. You'll sit there and you'll sleep and things will just kind of pool. And then you'll sit up and if there's a, any opening at all, it'll find a way out. Trying to get you to a B, you've got to remove a lot of breast tissue there, right. so there's just a space, and that's why you're swollen here. Mm -hmm. It'll pour fluid into that space, and that's also why, you know, when you sit up, sometimes that fluid will, will find a way to drain out. But over the next week or two, that's all going to be absorbed, and things will straighten okay. and just okay. get better and better. Okay. All right. All right, thank you. And if you have any questions, there's always somebody on call. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. No problem. You know, when you hear from the doctor, you feel more safe. Hi, Georgina. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you that it's okay, that this is something normal. Oh my God. <laughs> now you're getting there. Let me see the smile. My back doesn't hurt anymore. How's mommy's nose? Mm -hmm. I rarely just, walk out of a yes. star with a smile. I can be just like you. The drive from Sarasota to Miami is four hours, 250 miles. It's a huge amount of commitment, but this is very important to me, and I will continue doing the drive to see Dr. Wolf. He means a lot to me. He's changed my life. How long did it take you Four hours. Oh, my gosh. Well, well worth it, right? Of course. I'm anxious to see Laura. It's been about a month since I did her surgery. Hello, Hi. how are you? Good. You look great. And it's usually about a month when the patients really start getting to see what they're going to look like. Laura's condition has changed a lot for the better. Well, I'll tell you, you look like you healed great. Let me see the smile. Oh, your teeth are showing great. They're really pretty equal, too, huh? Mm -hmm. We can't take much more here surgically. No. Because, That's yeah. Why I want yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject right along here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Today I injected the steroids above the upper lip in an area that's still very thick and it's really difficult to cut out because if I would cut it out externally, you'd see incisions. And if I cut it internally, you might see depression and she may lose function. Concentrate on some good things. Okay, just for that. Ah. Uh. Okay, that's it. The injections are a maintenance that she will probably have to have for the rest of her life. Short of making an incision there, and I don't think it would be a wise decision, we can control it like this. Okay. I think she's going to stay in the straight and narrow. If she wants some cosmetic surgery, she's going to find somebody who is certified, and she's not going to be doing it in someone's garage. Great. <laughs> See you in about six weeks. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye, bye Okay, and I'm glad you're happy. What started out as a simple procedure for Laura, she's going to be dealing with the rest of her life. Wish I never did it, because no matter how improved it is, it just bothers me, and it always will. Every minute, actually, every every second of the day it bothers me. Every second of the day. As I predicted, Georgina's bleeding subsided, and I'm looking forward to seeing her final results. Hey there. Hi. How are you? Good, thanks. Feeling all right? Feeling good. Good. Let's take a peek. Now you're getting there, huh? Great. When Georgina came in for her post-op visit, she was fantastic. I mean, you can't do better in terms of recovery. And you could see that, that we'd really hit a home run there. And you'll find that things become more and more round on the bottom, uh, just, just as the tissues relax. Right. Get better and better. Well, I think it looks great already. <laughs> good, good. Me too. Okay. Me too. I went to work for the first time today and no backache. Oh. I got in the car and I thought, is something, I'm missing something. What's missing? My back doesn't hurt anymore, you know? Oh, that's good. And then you realize that all this weight has been lifted off. I'm thrilled with the results. This is cute. Let's go in. Here. Let's go in. Nice. It has revolutionized me completely. Now I go into the store with a smile in my face. Wow, Georgina, oh my God, you look great. You don't even need a bra. I 
know. Okay, I'm definitely getting this one. This is what I've been dying for. Your husband's gonna like that. Oh my gosh. I was very happy from the beginning with the size. I feel a lot lighter. I weighed myself before surgery, and I weighed myself the day after surgery, and I had lost four pounds. When I see pictures of myself before, I just think back and I think, why didn't I take care of this sooner? My battle with my back pain has been beaten. When I look at myself in the mirror, I feel sexier, which I wasn't feeling before because I had these, these melons in the front. And not too risque. No, I'm the one, I, for me it is. <laughs> I feel very carefree now. Now I look at it like if it was a bad dream, like it was something that I just dreamt and now I'm awakened from that and now I'm living my life. I barely walk out of a yeah. store with a smile. <laughs> How's it going? Good. 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 This is almost gone. Yeah, it is. What's well, saw my nose for the very first time. Hello. Hi. How you doing? You feeling okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I totally freaked out. It was swollen. It looked ugly. <laughs> well, we're gonna get rid of this. Good. It's not really what you expected, but you have to wait and you see the results little by little. Here's what you used to look like. Okay. This is you. Oh my god. I'm swollen. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's just perfect. It's beautiful. It's good. It's my phone week. You know what the great thing about it is? It's, it really brings out your eyes. But you look great. Do you know? <laughs> you want cookies or anything? Mm -hmm. The experience of getting my nose done was exciting. It was nerve-wracking at the beginning, but it was a very good experience. I think that my nose fits my face fine. Dr. Wolf doesn't make you look like you did a nose job. It's very natural and the nose fits my face. I like the profile of my nose. Obviously the bump did go away. My surgery cost me $6,500. It was money well spent. Nathan, how's mommy's nose? Is it smaller than it was before? <laughs> Okay. And Natalie, what do you think? Is it bigger or is it smaller? Big. I'm gonna take you to Dr. Wolf's office when I go. <laughs> He's gonna kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. Even though I'm tired and exhausted at the end of the day. Alright. I'm always looking forward to coming back the next day to see my patient's results. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. I get a real sense of satisfaction. See you guys. Bye. 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 Knowing I did my part to make Miami a more beautiful place. I think that sometimes it seems unfair that we even get paid for having so much fun. Good night. Good night. Good night, Captain Herman. Bye. -bye.